Hi Kayla, my name is Lauren and what we're going to do today is talk about oral self-care. I'm going to go wash my hands and then we'll get started. First thing I wanted to do is ask you what you know about plaque or biofilm. Um, I've heard of plaque before and I know that it's not really good for your teeth. Okay, great. Um, well, do you know anything about calculus or tartar? Um, isn't that the hard stuff on your teeth? Yes, very good. Um, now I'm going to help you understand both a little bit better and how they're formed and everything like that. <coughs> but first, we're going to take a quick look around in your mouth. Okay, I'm going to have you hold this mirror for me. I'm just going to flip this around. Let me see what Okay, looks good. If you look, your gums are nice, pale pink. Everything looks nice and healthy. Brushing's really good. How many times a week would you say that you floss? I would say about three. Okay, good. It's very important to get up where that toothbrush can't reach between your teeth. Okay, right around where your gums and your tooth meet, that biofilm can really collect um, because there's something to hold it to the tooth. So right up there where you get that floss, your toothbrush can't reach, so it's all sitting up against your gums. Now this biofilm is first formed by something called an acquired pellicle. Now this acquired pellicle is made of a lot of proteins from your saliva and it forms within minutes after all external materials are removed from your teeth after you brush, after you go to the hygienist. Starting now. Now, this acquired pellicle is both a good thing and a bad thing. It keeps the tooth surfaces moist and it acts as a protective barrier against acids that you may get from sodas or things like that. But it also acts as kind of like a double-sided tape which sticks both to your tooth and allows the biofilm to stick to it. Um, at the same time, it aids in the biofilm formation, and the biofilm occurs when microorganisms settle into the pellicle layer. They then form these different colonies, and then those colonies grow together to form the biofilm. The biofilm not only forms on the teeth, but also any small irregularities such as any cracks in your teeth or any um, fillings or re restorations you have. Now, And after the biofilm is formed, it begins to mineralize or harden, and this forms the calculus, or what you know as tartar, which, wait, erase the stop. The biofilm can then form on top of this calculus, and the microorganisms of the biofilm can cause periodontal disease. Have you ever heard of periodontal disease? No. Well, you may also know know it as bone disease, and through the ulcers in the diseased gingiva, um, the bacteria can then enter into the circulation of the whole body. This also can, it's been linked to cause cardiac, well, it's also known as bone disease, and through the ulcers in the diseased gingiva, the bacteria and their toxins can enter the circulation of the whole body, and the body's response, response may try to fight the bacteria but can it can also cut down the good tissue. The bacteria circu circulating through the body has been linked to both cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and even strokes. The biofilm can have an increased effect on caries, or you may know it as cavities. And for cavities, you must have a susceptible tooth with an increased sugar intake and an increased carbohydrate intake. When the bacteria on your teeth comes in contact with sucrose or sugar, it forms an acid. And then the acid on your teeth forms decay. The more frequently you, you drink sugar or eat something sugary or with carbohydrates, the increased your risk for caries. For example, it's better to drink a whole can of soda in one sitting rather than sipping on it all day. Uh, do you have any questions so far? No. Okay. Well, now what we're going to do is put this liquid in your mouth that, that will make your biofilm visible. So I'm going to put this apron on for you so it doesn't get on your shirt. Okay. I'm 
have you slip these glasses on for me. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to use this little cotton tip applicator and put it on all the surfaces of your teeth, okay? Okay. Great. Now what I'm going to have you do is swish around with this water and then just spit it right back into the cup. Thank you. Okay, now let's take a look together. Hold that mirror for me. And you see all the pink around your gums and in between your teeth? Mm -hmm. That's all your biofilm, okay? So what I'm going to have you do now is I want you to show me how you brush and floss. We'll start with flossing. You're going to get always get a piece of floss about this big. Okay. And what I want you to do is show me how you floss. And then we'll go over together ways that you can improve. Okay, here, this is my help pump. Huh? Very good. Can you show me somewhere on the bottom? Okay, great. Now show me how you brush, and then we'll go over both of them together. There you go. Okay, what about the inside? Perfect. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you just a little bit of helpful hints, what you want to do is get a long piece of floss and wrap it around your middle fingers. Okay, I'm going to have you grab that mirror for me. Great. And when you floss, we always want to move kind of in a sequence. So we'll start from the, the top right, move to the top left, move to the bottom and come back around, or whatever works for you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in the top right and then we'll move over, okay? okay. And what you want to do is guide it with your thumb and your finger just like this, okay? So open for me, good. And I'm going to show you kind of in the front here so we can see. You always want to move it in a seesaw motion to get it up in the gums. You see that? Mm -hmm. And then you want to curve it like a C around that tooth and up and down like that. And then come down a little bit, wrap it in the C the other, other direction, up and down like that. And I also want to show you kind of in these front teeth too, okay? So seesaw like that. Curve it in the C, up and down, up and down. Curve it around the other tooth, up and down like that, and then pull out. You never want to snap it down. You don't want to hurt yourself. I'm also going to show you some places on the bottom here. See, saw motion like that. Curve it like a C, up and down, come forward, just like that. Okay, now I want you to show me what I just showed you. This. I'll hold the mirror. <coughs> Perfect. Good. Can you show me on the bottom? Great. Great. going to show you a little different way to brush. Hold that mirror again for me. And what I always tell people is when you put it in your mouth, you always want the toothbrush right against your gums like this. And you never want to scrub back and forth like this, except if you're on the tops of your teeth, because nothing will happen with that. So what I want you to do is take your toothbrush, you see how it touches your gums just like this? Mm -hmm. I want you to vibrate back and forth in one certain spot for about 10 seconds. Count to 10. 
take the brush and move it forward. And 10 more seconds while you're overlapping that last tooth. Just like that. And like I said, you want to move in a sequence. And then when you get to these front teeth on the back side here, you might have to move your toothbrush like this. And what I want you to do is get the toothbrush right where the gum and the tooth meet. And same thing, vibrate back and forth for about 10 seconds. Move over, vibrate back and forth for about 10 seconds. And then when you get to the bottom, same thing. You might want to hold your toothbrush like this. Vibrate for about 10 seconds. And then continue on. So I'm going to have you show me. And I'll hold this for you. Very good. Great. Great job. Beautiful job. I can take that from you. Okay, now I also want to show you, sorry, hold this for me, the mirror. <laughs> I also want to show you, you never want to forget about your gums or your cheeks or your tongue or your palate, things like that. So after you finish your sequence of brushing, what you want to do is just take your toothbrush around and your lips and your cheeks. You want to brush down like that, come around the top, also in a sequence, brush your cheeks. And then you, on your palette, you just kind of want to swipe it across like that, okay? So I'm going to have you show me that. Great. Now I noticed that you brush your tongue. That's very good. I also have a tongue scraper here with me, and I want to show you how to use that too. I didn't see a lot of buildup on your tongue, but some people really, really like this tongue scraper. So I want you to hold this for me. And what you're going to do, stick your tongue out, I'm just going to hold this here. You're going to put this to the back of your tongue and kind of scrape forward, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have you try that. I'll hold this. Great. A lot of people like these tongue scrapers. You know, you can get it at any store by your house. Okay, I can take this. I know that's a lot of information, but do you have any questions so far? No. Okay, very good. Now all that is just a little bit of extra information to help you with, with yourself, with your oral self-care, brushing, flossing, to keep your mouth nice and healthy, okay? <clears throat> now. We also always suggest using a soft bristle, bristle toothbrush instead of a hard bristle or medium because it's a little bit softer on your gums, you know, it does less damage. And then we always suggest using a fluoride toothpaste to help with prevention of cavities or caries. Um, do you use a fluoride toothpaste? No. No? Well, I have a little sample here for you to take home with a toothbrush and toothpaste, so that's perfect. Um, we're about coming to the end of our oral self-care teaching. Do you? Can you tell me maybe two things that you learned today? Um, I learned how to brush my teeth correctly and I learned about plaque. Okay, very good. Well, it was a pleasure working with you and next time we can evaluate your oral health and see how you're doing with everything you learned today. Do you have any questions before you leave? No, I don't. Okay, great. No. We also suggest always using a soft bristle toothbrush compared to a hard bristle or medium bristle toothbrush because it's less damaging on your gums. Um, we also suggest nylon bristles because it collects less bacteria. Um, we also always give out a fluoridated, fluoridated toothpaste. Um, do you know if your toothpaste has fluoride in it? I'm not sure if it does. Well, you can always tell by looking on the box. It'll be one of the ingredients. And I'm going to give you a little sample of one today. Um, so do you have any questions about today so, so far? Um, just how long am I supposed to brush my teeth each time? Oh great, I'm glad you asked. Um, you always want to brush at least two minutes. They always have little timers, like sand timers, or what I always suggest doing is like playing part of your favorite song, you know, and, and measure that for about two minutes. Um, can you maybe tell me two things that you learned today? Um, I learned how to brush correctly and I learned about plaque. Very good. 
Well, it was a pleasure working with you today, Kayla. You could take those glasses off, and I will take this from you. And the next time you come in, we can evaluate your oral self-care again. And if you have any questions or any problems, we can review that at your next appointment. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.